Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Larry O'Connor and on today's segment of Crash Course News, we will interview some of the most renowned men ever to hold office in the position of President of the United States. We will also take an in-depth look at the intricacies of their elections. Here with us today we have Roosevelt, Reagan, and Bush, among many other presidents. Now on to you, Karen. Thanks, Larry. Greetings, viewers, and welcome. Today with me I have some of the most influential men in American history. First off, I'd like to start with President Lyndon B. Johnson, the man behind the Great Society. Hello, Karen. It's a pleasure to be here. So, President Johnson, what was it that made your Great Society program such an incredible success? Well, Karen, it really all started out with the election of 1964, you see. During my campaign, I had fought hard for social programs because I knew that there needed to be real change in America. Uh, promises such as these, in addition to me already having been a vice president under JFK, uh, gave me incredible popularity. This popularity allowed other members of the Democratic Party to ride my coattails into office. Uh, well, this is almost amazing, but my party, the Democratic Party, actually gained 37 seats in the House alone. Uh, this increase in support allowed me to pass all the legislation I wanted. Well, that's certainly a very interesting point. Thank you for your time, Mr. President. And next up, we have Mr. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. How are you, Mr. President? I'm doing fine, Karen. Uh, I've, it's great to be here. I've heard so much about this program. Well, that is very nice of you, Mr. President. And now, I know that you hold the longest time in office, 4,423 days to be exact. That is very impressive. Well, it was certainly a bunch of hard work. Uh, getting elected four times was by no means an easy job. Uh, still, though, once I was in office, getting stuff done uh, as I saw fit became much easier. When I was first elected in 32, my colossal popularity allowed a whopping 97 Democrats, uh, well, these are just representatives alone, to ride my coattails into office. Uh, in my remaining three elections, my political party always gained seats in both the Senate and the House. Thank you for your time, Mr. President. Now, Larry, those two cases seemed awfully familiar, don't you think? Right you are, Karen. It really seems to me like Johnson and Roosevelt carried into their elections a great deal of support. Uh, is there a term for this? Of course, Larry. It's called the coattail effect. This takes place when a political leader attracts votes for candidates of his party. A presidential coattail, as we've seen here, is when a popular presidential candidate carries members of his political party into office, like in Congress. Essentially, their win is dependent on his coattails. Fascinating. Now who else will we interview today? Well, Larry, next up we have the man who can proudly say he was the 41st President of the United States. President George H.W. Bush. How are you, Mr. President? Hello, Karen. Thanks for having me here. Thank you for coming. Even before being elected president in November of 1988, you'd accomplished much in the government. Yes, Karen, that's certainly true. Uh, in fact, I had served much time in the Navy. Uh, I had been a representative from Texas and uh, also a UN ambassador. And for a brief while, I served as the director of the CIA and uh, most recently, I was elected vice president. Uh, basically, I had become very popular with the American people, uh, but even so, this didn't allow the other members of my political party to ride my coattails into office. That's a very good point. Thank you for coming, Mr. Bush. And, Mr. Bill Clinton, thanks for being on the show. It's always a pleasure to be here, Karen. Now, Mr. President, how do you explain the loss of nine Democratic seats in the House of Representatives as you were elected president? Well, you see, Karen, I'm not really sure. Uh, to me, it seems to be more of a reverse coattail effect. Oh, yes, same with our friend George Bush Sr. How interesting. Well, uh, yes, it got me into a little bit of trouble during my presidency, but that's all behind me now. Oh, yes, I'm sure we all remember. And I'm afraid our time with you has elapsed, Mr. President. Thank you for your time, Bill. Thank you, Karen. I always enjoy coming on your show. Well, Karen, it really seems to me that these two presidents had the exact opposite experience of what Johnson and Roosevelt had. Uh, so, basically, Congress shifted against the presidents as soon as they were elected. Yes, it is strange indeed, Larry, but I suppose even the strongest of presidents don't always experience the coattail effect during their elections. And, as we've seen, this effect has been on the decline throughout the years, mainly due to the more important roles incumbency and parties have on elections. And now, let's take a look at our final two presidents and their stories. First up, we have President Ronald Reagan himself. Thank you so much for joining us, President Reagan. It's an honor to be on your show, Karen. Now, Mr. President, you gained considerable support in the 1984 election. Was this boost in party support reflected in Congress at the time? Well, um, I did win by a very considerable margin in the 1984 election. 
But um, no, there was not really a considerable effect in Congress. So, you know, I, m I must say... Thank you, Mr. President. And now last, but certainly not least, let's have President Richard Nixon. Thanks for having me, Karen. It's always a pleasure to be on your show. And are we ever so thankful to have you, Mr. President. Now let me get this straight. You won a landslide victory against Mr. McGovern, yet there wasn't much change in Congress. How can you explain this? Well, yes, Karen, that does seem to be true. Just another case like my good friend Roosevelt's, a sweeping victory for the President, yet not much reciprocated in Congress. What would you say caused this change, Larry? Well, Karen, I think it might be because uh, the coattail effect isn't very much guaranteed. I mean, as we saw with Clinton and Bush, sometimes the exact opposite of the coattail effect can occur. Uh, I think it just really just depends on the circumstances of the election. Really interesting, Larry. And Mr. Nixon, thank you so much for your time. The pleasure is mine, Karen. So, Karen, I'm just thinking about something. Enlighten me, Larry. You know, Karen, this has all got me thinking about the 1970s. I mean, you know, big hair, disco music, and Republicans. The Republicans never rode coattails like they could have. Oh, now I remember, Larry. The Democrats were vulnerable, yet they ran unchallenged. Interesting aspect of coattails in American history, Larry. So would you say that the effects of coattails are decreasing? You bet I would, Larry. Incumbency and political parties are just two enormous factors that have almost completely outweighed the coattail effect over the years. That's certainly very fascinating. So this concludes our segment today on the coattail effect. And from all of us here at Crash Course News, we hope you have a nice day.